Hey guys, so I picked up this Blackstone 36 inch grill cooking station a few weeks ago. I've been dying to assemble it, put it together and try it out. This model was purchased at Walmart and it's about $100 cheaper than the models that you get at a place like Lowe's. If you check out the specs like I did, it has the same warranty, which is one year, and the same amount of BTU and the same square inches of cooking surface. So let's go ahead and get this unboxed, get it assembled, and we'll take a closer look. Okay, the body is laying down on a flat smooth surface with a spring loaded pin. In there is keeping the legs folded down, so you have to pull that out and then you can unfold the legs. Right here I'm unboxing the, the bottom shelf. Just put that aside. And the next step is to add the the right hand side casters to it. Those screw on with the small thumb screws. Now you can put the bottom shelf on. As you see when it's upside down, it looks like that. And I'm putting this shelf, I'm putting the tank bracket on there right now. And you'll see in a few more clips that this was a mistake. That tank bracket should actually be on the other side. So it's being held in there by a large and a medium thumb screw, but that's gonna change. You can flip it back over. And the next step is to add on the side handle. And that takes four M6 screws. This is where I realized my mistake and I'm changing that tank bracket and you can see the tank bracket is supposed to mount to the side with the locking casters. This is the paper towel holder that gets screwed in there by two washers and one screw. And then you have these two aluminum handles that screw onto the lid. And the other side of the lid are the hangers. So you have to put the hangers on the inside and then pass the screw through the hangers, through the lid, and screw it into the handle. So that's what I'm doing here. The screws that are part of this handle are already partially screwed into the handles. Um, they're boxed up that way, so you don't have to get those screws out of the hardware package. Now just add on the knobs, those just push right in. Next step is to add a single AA battery for the electronic ignition. Now I am taking the tank hanger, putting a hinge pin in there, and then locking it with the cotter pin. These are some pegs that screw into the front of the side shelves, and so you basically just Throw a washer on there and then you screw the pegs right onto the front. Tighten them up. You do that for both shelves. And then there are two M8 screws that have to screw onto the top section of the shelf. And these are shoulder screws that are going to hang right onto these brackets that get screwed onto the side of the griddle body. And you watch as the shelf hangs right on there. And then they accept a second M8 screw at the bottom to secure those in. Now you're gonna grab a partner and take the griddle top and just drop it on the top of the body. That's the grease collection and the lid. 
Now you can secure the tank. Test it out. All right, so now we're gonna season the griddle. And before we start, we have to wipe down the griddle top to make sure it's clean of any debris from packaging. So now, let's open up a propane tank valve, and we're gonna set all four burners to high. And it's started. Um, we're just checking down in between just to confirm that all four burners are lit and they are in fact lit and the next step is to wait until the griddle top changes color the seasoning oil that i'm going to use today is grass-fed ghee i prefer to use the animal fat for my seasoning instead of a vegetable oil that's just my preference you can go either way that you want i prefer ghee what I'm going to do is add two to three tablespoons of this ghee evenly onto the surface and wipe a nice thin layer evenly across the griddle top. So now we're gonna let that burn off completely. And then we're gonna do it again two or three more times. This is still the first application. As you can see, the griddle top is starting to turn black, uh, more so in the center first. That's where most of the heat is concentrated, obviously. And off to the sides, there's less heat, but that will eventually get black as well. So we're gonna wait for the griddle to stop smoking completely and then we're going to repeat the same process by adding on another two tablespoons or so of oil and we wait and wait and wait some more all right the seasoning process takes a lot longer than i thought so i'm not going to bore you with the whole process I'm just gonna pick back up on film. So I finally just got done seasoning the griddle. That took about 45 minutes, and I only oiled it up three times. So I figured three times is enough. They said three to four times. After the third time, I'm done. So that's what the griddle should look like after it's been fully seasoned. It's pretty much all completely black. I have a little bit of lightness up in that top right corner, but besides that, it's fully black so that means that it's fully seasoned and a fully seasoned griddle top means that it's going to be naturally non-stick and it's going to protect it against corrosion so before I wrap this video up I just want to go over some key features of this blackstone griddle so this again is a 36 inch blackstone griddle and it's the Walmart version so that means it's about $100 cheaper than the more expensive versions, but you get the same amount of BTU, the same cooking surface, and it's gonna cook the same kind of quality meats and eggs and all whatever, whatever sort of thing that you're gonna cook on here. The only differences are it doesn't have as many bells and whistles. So for example, the knobs are not like chrome plated knobs and we don't have an enclosed uh, cabinet door system down at the, at the bottom. We have an open shelf where we can store a few things. On the sides, there is a right-hand side and a left-hand side shelf. Both shelves can be folded down for storage to make this grill smaller for when you put the cover on it. And each shelf has some pegs on the ends for you to hang grill tools off of. The left hand shelf actually has a magnetic tool holder so you don't even have to hang it if your tools are magnetic you can just stick them right to here. Um, one of the things about this is though since this side also folds down however you have your tank over here so it can never really fold down completely 
So that's kind of uh, a weird thing there, but not a real big deal. The cover on this grill is right here. And right now I have a hanging off of the back of the griddle, or the cast iron griddle surface. And that's what it's made to do. So you can go ahead and hang it there while you're cooking. You have to make sure that you don't heat the griddle at all with the lid on there. It's a real thin metal. It's gonna heat up really quick. It probably would warp. And I'm sure the paint that's on there is not meant for high heat either. Casters are pretty good quality. We have two locking casters at the bottom and then two uh, regular casters that do not pivot, uh, but they, they roll pretty well. So it's easy to relocate the grill on a smooth flat surface, especially. The tank hangs off to the side uh, pretty easily and it's uh, unobtrusive and it seems to work very well. I'm definitely looking forward to cooking some delicious smash burgers and searing some beautiful steaks on this griddle. But that's gonna be for another video. So if you like this video of the assembly and the seasoning of the Blackstone griddle, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more awesome videos. Thanks for watching.